today and blogging two of one. I've prepared a couple of slides, but I wanted to let this up, this session be a little more flexible um, because I want to answer whatever questions you've got. Everyone's got different <coughs> things, and there's only a few of us. Why don't we just really make this tailored to ourselves? I do have a few slides though for things that commonly come up and stuff that I promised in the description, which I wrote. I don't know, last week in a hurry. So hopefully some of that stuff is things that you're interested in, and that's why you're here. My name is Cynthia Kuski. I own a website design company and an online marketing company, digital marketing, if you will. Uh, my website company uh, is Big Big Design. And then I am also one of the founders of Pittsburgh Bloggers, which is a directory of blogs in the Pittsburgh area. Um, we founded that back in 2008. We'll have to figure out where it's going to go in the future. So, so in this session, this is this. Uh, we're going to tune this to however people need it to be or want it to be as we um, as we talk through. Uh, I'm going to start with some things that are a little more simple, but it's not quite as introductory as the one-on-one -on -one session. And so, if there's really really basic questions, I may ask you to just catch me at lunchtime or um, after um, afterwards, so that we can keep on more of the focus of the more advanced things. Yeah. The focus of the so. I, and I'm so excited to see all the people here. I forgot to start up my slides. So, let's do <laughs> so basically, I trust that you're here to do more things with your blog. And the things that I find when people have been blogging for a little while, the things that they are most interested in knowing are how to bring in more traffic, or if they feel like they've got a little traffic, but you know the traffic is sort of coming there and they they, they don't know who they are or what they want to sort of engage them or figure out how to be more involved with the people that are reading their site. Um, some people want to make money from their websites, which is always a good um, goal. And we'll talk about what's possible and things that are harder with them. And then the question, and this is a, something that I personally, as a person who's been blogging for over a decade now, the, the challenge that all of us face all the time is how to keep blogging, how <laughs> to keep going over time. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about some ideas for that too. And then I'm going to leave a lot of time for just questions and discussion. And then maybe that some of the people here will have answers as much as I will. So we'll just try and be interactive. So um, the, the thing that I think is most important to do when you're trying to do any of these things beyond just sort of getting started is to spend some time looking at the traffic to your website. Actually, looking at the traffic itself. That's what this is a picture of traffic. The pictures don't have it really necessarily that much to do with what I'm saying um, most of the time. It's just that you don't have to stare at me the whole time. So um, it is well worth your time to put a, a, a good analytics, that's what we call it, analytics for analyzing the traffic tool on your website. Google offers a free one, as you may know, it's Google Analytics. Um, it's free in the sense that you don't pay any money, but in exchange you're giving Google the chance to launch all the things that happen on your website, which is of course a double-edged sword. But I think it's worthwhile, and that's what I do with the client sites that I um, set up, is I set up Google's tools. They let me look at which blog posts are getting the most traffic. Um, they let me see when people come to the site, do they look at more than one page, or do they just pop away? For a blog, by the way, it is not the worst thing in the world for someone to come and read one thing and go away. If they're returning traffic, people are, are, constant, are often reading your website, it's perfectly okay to have what we call a high bounce rate. A bounce is when someone comes to your site and then goes away but without looking at another page. But having a high bounce rate for a blog is okay if they're reading a post every time one comes up. Because of course they're only going to read the one, they've already read all the other ones. Um, it's interesting to see, though, when someone comes in, can you then help them find the other stuff in your site? And so the point of analyzing your traffic is it lets you know which are the topics or the posts um, that people are most drawn to. And then you have a chance to think about how can I write more about that or how can I help someone who came in on that topic find other st related stuff on the same site. It'll just tell you which, which tools are worth adding. Things like a, um, uh, another tool that would maybe say, hey, if you enjoyed this post, here are some related posts. Or even to go in by hand and say, if you read this, I've written an update of it here. So analyzing your traffic is the first useful thing. I would look at, if I'm analyzing the traffic of a website, I look at what are the most popular topics. <coughs> I look at, um, are there particular days of the week when more traffic comes in or not? 
Um, and I um, complement the analytics tool that Google uses with another tool they have called the Webmaster um, Webmaster tools. Webmaster, there's, um, I'll get into depth about this if we have enough time at the end, but um, Google Analytics sometimes doesn't tell you what people, what search words people used to come to your site. It just says they came in from search and I'm not going to tell you what they were searching for. It does this for reasons that it gives, but I don't believe them. But Google Webmaster Tools will tell you all the words that people use in coming to your site. They won't let you know exactly what they did once they got there, but you'll know more about which search terms are being used. And so it's worthwhile using both of Google's tools, um, Webmaster Tools there. So Webmaster Tools, Google Analytics, they're linked together, get to use together. So once you have a general sense of, um, you, once you have tools up there to be analyzing your site, you, the next thing that people tend to do is they wish that there were more people on their site. Because often you'll say, I have some traffic, but not that much. Um, and so the way to drive up the traffic for your site is to do a few very small tweaks. This is a picture, this is from a couple years ago, but uh, it's such a beautiful graph. Do you notice anything about the graph? What do you notice? The, 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 this is going along, it's going along, it's going along, and then there's this big burst. So here's what happened. The, um, there's a, a blog called the DIY Show, DIY Show Off. And she um, called me up um, and asked if I could give her just some ideas. Uh, you know, could she hire me? Really, I didn't, she didn't even need to hire me. The, the, the information I wanted to share with her was so simple, I didn't want to charge her for it. I'm not charging you either. The same solution that I gave to her, I give to you. Now, she had already been putting in some work. I mean, she gets you know, a, a fair amount of traffic. This is just her search engine related traffic. So she has other things coming in from her, you know, referrals and from Facebook and so on. But she has, she, um, the DIY show, she would blog very regularly. She had a good readership. And she just felt like search engines were not paying attention to her. She was only getting readership from other sites. So she wanted to know how to rank better in search engines. So I gave her a few pieces of advice. And she, she followed my advice here. And then this happened. And then, and then this is when I took the picture. That's why it drops down. So it's a, such a huge jump that I want you to know what it is. So uh, I'm going to be a little <coughs> video here. Um, so forgive me. But when you know when you search for something, there are um, ads and there are not ads. And if you're searching for a thing like hairstylists, something where there's sort of a location specificness to things, then there'll also be like a map here and maybe some location related here. But mostly, what I'm pointing out to you here is that you can rank better in search engines either by paying for it or by just doing a few little tuning things, or actually a whole bunch of tuning if you want to. And so the tuning stuff will affect you being in where you are in here. We call this organic results. And then the paid stuff will affect where you are here. But when you tune the stuff up here, this part costs you less as well. So if you're thinking about for your business, um, you doing some paid ads, you it helps to first do the organic stuff first, and then this stuff will cost you less through the magic of Google. So. Um, but what's important about search um, is to know that there are a few key things in the way that um, web pages are constructed that Google cares about more than other things. More and more Google cares about your site being well written and having a good look and being easy to navigate. And they find that out through, again, Google magic. I say Google, Google and Bing, they all um, uh, are competing against each other. It used to be that Google had almost all the search traffic, you know, like 86% of search traffic went through Google. Now they're down to about 66% because Bing and Yahoo have been doing better and better uh, at marketing themselves. Um, but so if still Google is sort of in charge. And so if you do things that Google likes, it's probably going to help you and all the other ones too. So when I say Google, I do mean everybody. But so search engines care about several things. They care about how do things look when they show up in search results. When you look at a search result, you know, a thing that points to a web page, you could consider it as like a little mini ad that you placed for free. So you have a title to your ad, you have an address, and then you have the blurb, you know? The blurb, the thing that people, I mean, think about yourself using a search result. Well, how do you decide which of the links that you see, how do you decide which one to click? You're gonna go based on, do the words match the thing that you looked at? 
And does the description appeal to you? Well, Google looks at those things too. It looks to see how well what you, you know, well a single page matches a search term and how much the content of that page matches the search term. So um, Google will look at your web page and it'll say, this is a good result to show or this is not a great result, I'm going to show it later or not at all. Almost every web site tool now has the opportunity for you to tweak the stuff that Google's going to show and the rest of the stuff in your page to help you show up better. Um, you, you'll want, I mean, in the early days of search engines, you, uh, and so the rep, I'm going to talk about Britney Spears here, which tells you how long ago this was. But so people would put like Britney Spears in pages in hidden places so that um, Google would rank higher for searches for Britney Spears or something, or think the page was better. Um, and, but Google realized people were doing that. Nobody really cared as much about Britney Spears or wrote it much better as, they, as people pretended to be. So they've, they've narrowed it down to just a few things that they pay attention to a whole lot. And they are the title of the, 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 um, the sort of internal title of the page, the code title of the page, the description of the page, and then the rest of the content. Those are things they care about more than anything else. So within your, um, and this will pull up that thing you were just looking at. Within your site, oh, I have to make a list. I'm going to show you on from my website, Big Big Design, a sample blog post, and then how we tune it. So here I am, this is WordPress. Uh, and if you look at the front of the site, there's the site, there I am. And then we have a blog. And there are entries in the blog. And we have another blog. Okay, so let's pick um, this one. So here's a blog post. It is about using, putting words on pictures and using that in social media, which is the thing I recommend, by the way. People like to click and share things like that. And also, it's fun to look at. And so it's a nice complement to the, whatever content you're writing in your site. Um, it's a very shareable way to get people to link back to and look at your site. And it's just nice. Uh, and then you get to use pictures of things like piano strings in clever ways. So here's a blog post. This blog post has a title, pictures plus words equal better social sharing. And then it's got content. And then you can see the beginning of this post. Uh, you've seen them. You've seen them, colon, pictures with words embedded in them and words presented as images. They're everywhere across the web. Some are memes, but more are quotes, advice, and inspirational things. So it's sort of an introduction. But as a search result, imagine if you saw pictures with words equals better social sharing and then this. That might not be the, that doesn't really capture everything that's in this post. This post actually like, gives examples and how-tos and much, much more. So a better result for that would be to actually say things like, here are how to, here's some tips on how to use this. And then I could write a better description for it. Well, so I have a tool built into my blog. type and talk at the same time as you can tell. 
So what I've written here is this. How to use pictures to help people uh, share your blog posts on Facebook, Twitter, and um, other social media. Includes examples and how-to steps. So that's a much better description for this to show up in search engines. And if people saw that, you know, pictures plus words equals better social sharing, and then this description. So now this, this little blurb updated this, and now here's what I look like. So other nice things that this does for me, it tells me how many characters I have left in that description, because it does have a maximum length. And if I wrote a different title for it, then it would also change the title. Is the title more important or carry more weight when it comes to affecting rankings? Is the title more important than description or about the same? There, are, I mean, it's, it's hard to know exactly because the stuff changes and it's hard to experiment on. Um, I wouldn't, more important than what? I would say that the, the title, this, this code title is more important than the article heading. So there's two things in the uh, code of a site. Let's go back and look at that post again. Um, I'm going to do something ever so slightly scary here, but do not be afraid. It is going to be okay. I'm going to show you the, how this looks in, um, in, so we're going into the matrix right now. Here's the code for this page, okay? Um, and there's a bunch of stuff going on here, um, but that there's the title that you saw, which is a heading level one, probably. And so that's farther down. Up here at the top, I'm in sort of the internal, like, computers talking to computers type code. And one of the things in there is this thing that says, literally, title. This is called a meta tag. It's the title tag. And so this is what I type into that SEO tool. Now, if I don't type anything into it, then the website knows to just take the title of the post and the name of my website and, like, put them together, and it's going to put it in here. But in that SEO plugin that I added, I can override this with something that is loaded with keywords or something interesting. So I could put something that was more valuable and or more appealing to people. You don't want to mislead people, so you want to do stuff that is up, upright and sort of good. I mean, you're it's going to be seen by the world. So anyway, what I'm, to answer your question, Google cares more about what's in here than it does what's in the H1 title later on. So it's more important to get my search engine words in here than to get them into my H1 title. Is that, so does that make sense? So tuning these, so this is what I told that lady that does the DIY show up. Pick your most important blog posts, the ones that are getting the most traffic or that you think should be getting more traffic than they are. Tune them. Tune all of their titles and tune their descriptions. Pick what keywords are important. You know, what do you think this people for her DIY show up, you know, recovering couches. If she's got a couple posts on that, she should put, you know, recovering or, you know, I don't know whatever the words would be, I'll put them in. Whatever people would search for in real life. Put that into these titles in a way that's readable. Don't just like say, couches, recovering couches, sofas, recovering sofas. I mean, who wants to, who wants to click that? So click, write it nicely, but use the words people you search on in the title and in the description, and then those posts will do better. So all you need to do is take your blog, just remember what you're trying to rank on, find the posts that relate to that, tune them, and you will see a jump in that traffic. And now you know, too, when you write your next post, how should you be, it changes the way you think about your blogging. I mean, if you're writing a journal, you're writing a journal, and it's fine. And you, you know, you want to write interesting stuff. But you still, there's something about your journal that is unique to you. You know what I mean? So you can think about how that, how people would search to find, the, how, what are the people that you wish were reading your site? What, what are they probably searching for? Does this make sense? So if you're not using WordPress, whatever you're using has something like this. And if you are using WordPress and you don't have that Yoast plugin, that's too bad because he's really good. Um, but um, there's another one that would do some of the same stuff. Some nice things about the Yoast plugin, though, just to plug it a little bit more. Since I use it all the time and I don't really pay him for it, so it should be nice to him as much as possible. Um, Is it a free plugin or a paid plugin? It is free. Okay. Um, okay, so here we are back down to this post. Sorry, I have to keep doing this. Oh, yeah, this, I'm still in the post code. Okay. 
So one of the nice things it does is, let's say for this post, I was going to do sort of, if the search word that I think people are going to use is like embedded pictures, which I don't actually think it is, but I'm doing it, the plugin will tell me, oh, you know what? You want people to find this for that, but you didn't use that phrase in the heading. You didn't use it in the page title. You didn't use it anywhere. It's like, oh, you're right. <laughs> so then you know to rethink what you're doing. Um, and then it will also give you, if you've put in something like that, what do we think? What, is there a name for those things with pictures with the, you know, with the words over them? I don't know. I'm just going to put pictures. But I mean, what do you, it's like, it's kind of a meme. Um, but sometimes it's just sort of a quote or inspirational saying or something. Mm -hmm. I should invent a word, right? I mean, yeah. I was totally right for that. Klosskyism. That's a klosskyism. Yeah, that's great. I would love to be known as that person, but I'm not that reliable. OK, so if you do have a keyword here, it's going to tell you, you know, did you use it in the heading? Did you use it in the actual title that people see on the page? Did you use it in the URL? Which, again, in WordPress and other things, you can control that. And did you use it in the content? And then did you use it in the description? Then, if you, so if you do just this part, then you, you know, it's the 80-20 rule. 80% of the result is going to come from doing this little bit of stuff. Then to get that extra 20%, if you really, really, really need to tune a page or if the competition is super high, they have a little, another little tab here. And you can't read this, but it's telling you all the things that the, the, the top search engine optimizing people think are, have, de have deduced are important in Google's algorithm, Google's super secret algorithm. And then they can say, how are you doing? And there are things like the keyword density is 0.21%, which is a bit low. I've only used that phrase pictures one time in the post, whatever it was, or meme or something. And so then you might choose to remember to use it a few more times to balance out the rest of the text. Uh, you know, of course, you can go too far. If you like, it's just, you know, pictures, 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 then that's really sticking in. It'll tell you don't go too far. But you can see it's going to give you a little, you know, red light, green light grading. Um, it tells you things like there are this many outbound links, which are good. Google likes to see that you're pointing people elsewhere for you being a good resource. It's got some pictures. Google loves pictures and videos. Google loves videos. So if you've got those things in there, it's going to like that. So that's how this second level will tell you. So you can see I'm actually a good blogger in some ways. <laughs> when I remember to tune them. If you're going to switch from all in one to yo, because I've thought about that. Okay. Do you need to? All in one is a is a, a alternative like plugin instead of the Yoast SEO plugin. But it doesn't it doesn't really give you as much of this kind of stuff. That's part of why I like this yeah. one. So I if you're going to switch, do you just Eliminate all in one and then yeah. start using Yoast. And does all the all in one data that's on past posts go away? I haven't or? done that, so I don't know. But then there may be an importing tool. There may be, a, like Yoast, when you switch to it, it may notice that you used to use all in one. And it'll say, Do you want me to pull in what you did before? Because that's where I struggle is, you know, after thousands of posts, how do that would be a, that such would a be a switch? Work. That's a really good question. We can look at that after the session. That's a great question. Um, yes, maybe way beneath what others level is and a private question, but I'll ask it anyhow. Um, what the heck are WordPress, those plugins? Okay, so um, like WordPress is like where the, what is the software that is running the blog. Okay. Um, and then usually when you have software, you can add things on. And Yoast is a guide that makes stuff you can add on to sites. So it's like his brand name, his company. His real name is Yoast, J-O-O-S-T. You know, he, like people pronounce it. So, so he spells it that way for his company. So I'll talk. I'll talk more with you about that afterwards, though. Okay. And all in one is. Uh, all in one is an alternative. Is another another plugin that someone wrote. All the plugins have to have really distinct names so they don't conflict with each other. Thank you. You're welcome. More questions. So. One of the most hit posts on my blog was a post I wrote in 2010 that was really about an incident of sexual assault um, between wrestlers. And of course, it gets hit. That seems hit. like that would be a big topic right now. It gets hit big time, but for kind of the wrong reasons. OK. People, that, people do this just as they search for sex terms. Mm -hmm. This comes up, I think, because of that kind of thing. So, 
Do you have any thoughts about how to get the, the, kind of, the right kind of business as opposed to the wrong kind of search business? Because this post still gets just enormous hits every month. Well, so here's the thing. So, uh, so the situation, I'm just going to paraphrase it a little bit. You have a blog post, and sometimes people find your site for that blog post, and they're like, this is exactly the site I wanted to see. And so then they hop around, and they can do other stuff on your site. And then other people are searching for something else, and your site com that post comes up because it happens to have some of the same words, but it's not the right thing. So first of all, over time, you would think that Google might figure out people are coming to that site and then bouncing away. And there's really not a lot, you can't like tell them don't come and look, you know what I mean? Just let them come. It actually makes the overall quality of your site a little higher anyway. It's fine. Okay. Um, uh, so I wouldn't worry, I wouldn't try and like keep those people out. Um, but I would um, think about then for the people who find it for the right reasons, you want to make the most of their visit. And so think about are there other posts in your site that relate to that, or maybe it's time now to revisit that topic and write more about it. And so when you do that, when you write more about a topic that you wrote about before, go back to that older post and at the top of it write a little update, I've written more about this here, or like I have a, a really popular Facebook post from several years ago that frankly is out of date. And so I need to write a new post about how to do it now, and then when people arrive at that old one, say, uh, alert this information, I'm so glad you're here, but I have a better post that's more up to date with the new stuff in Facebook. Check it out and then a link to that. Google loves that because then you visited more, they, you, they visited more than one page on your site. Also, you've got the same words in more than one post. That's very valuable to do. So I would try and focus more on how do I make the visits of the people who arrive happy rather than scaring with people okay, okay. otherwise. And when you, when you talk about this internal linking, or is that more than just saying, you know, I wrote about such and such before. I almost, I almost always do that in a blog post. If I wrote about a topic before, I'll say, you know, I wrote about such and such here, and that will be a link to it. That's really all it needs. Okay, okay. Yeah, a thing like that. Okay. I mean, or if you've got a whole category on something, like you did a series of posts on a thing, you could either link one by one or link to a page that has all of them. Both of those things are good to do. From a search engine perspective, they're about equal. This, I love, can you tell that I love talking about this, this stuff? I find it so fascinating. So, uh, and useful. Also scary though, because you can see so much. When I talked about the analytics earlier and this search engine stuff, it makes you realize, well, wait a minute, all the other Amazons and everybody's on the internet, they're doing these things too. So you never have a moment of privacy when you're right now. But it's good to know that, better to know than not to know. So some more things that you can do to make your um, site friendly to search engines are these. So here's the thing is that over time, you know, people have spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to um, rank high. I mean, people have their entire careers around these kind of things. Uh, and so the stuff that used to work that people like used the wrong way, Google, um, has built in ways to kind of make that worthless. So for example, it used to be that there was a thing called um, keyword tags in your meta tags, and you could kind of put useful keywords in there. But that was sort of the honor system. You know, you were telling Google, oh yes, this post is about Britney Spears and pop music and so forth, when it really wasn't. So over time, Google noticed, oh, people are doing slimy stuff with this meta tag. So they now no longer even look at the keywords tag. They do look at the title tag because they use that and that's visible to the public. And they use the description because that's visible to people in the search engines. But they don't use basically anything, everything that they do is very focused on the actual web user experience. So as long as you are making a website that people like to visit, that's visually pleasing to see, that is written in a way that is conversational or unique or different or interesting, um, that includes the right balance of pictures and not too many, not too few. All of those things are things that will help you rank better. So one of the challenges is that, you know, you're trying to do a lot of things in your site. You have all these competing interests. Maybe you want to make a little bit of money and so you want to put some ads up. But if you put them up in a, like, you put up a ton of ads and you write good content, but your site is sort of hard, it's like, oh my God, 
just turn, can I just turn down this column? Then you are down, you are reducing some of the quality of your site. So there's a balancing act to be found. Um, if you find that um, you do something and it starts, and you start to have lower, uh, um, a lower number of people visiting it, or your rank on certain words rock, drops down, you maybe want to go back and undo what you did and see if it goes back up. Go ahead. I have a question about keywords. So I'm okay with the fact that Google doesn't search specific keywords, and by that you mean when you put in the back end where you actually enter those words that are specific to your particular post, right? Is that where you're talking specifically the about? The keyword that you put in there, that is not for Google to look at. It's for the search engine tool to tell you, you said that you wanted this to be about here, mm -hmm. and instead you wrote about this other thing. Okay, so if you're doing a blog around a particular set of ideas, yeah. essentially those ideas, which you might also call keywords, right, should be filtered throughout the content that you're posting kind about. Of, yeah, I mean, so what, what works is um, to have, if you know that a certain um, phrase, you're writing about a topic, use that phrase on that page. Right. Like, you wouldn't have... Each page can only really prioritize one keyword. When I say keyword, I mean a couple of words. You uh -huh, know, uh -huh. so if you have a couple different services that you're selling, uh -huh. write a separate page for each one of them. Okay. Or that's you know a different catalog page and a catalog. Um, if you've got something that's important enough that you feel like you want to rank on it, then make a separate page for it, or a separate blog post, or a separate several blog posts that focus on that. Does that make sense? Because every page can't have every word prioritized. You have right. To right. Pick a top one. Yeah. And that's why in that tool, you wouldn't put in a string of keywords, you just pick one for the post. Uh -huh. it's, the same will still come up for other words that are in there, it's perfectly okay. Um, but it's a discipline to know you want to choose one as the sort of the prime thing. Okay. Did I answer that? That sounded very gobbledygookie to me, but I hope it was clear. So the more usable your site is, the more that people come to your site and they don't have trouble finding things in it, they don't have trouble finding your name, um, there's a logical hierarchy to the pages, all of those things actually end up in the long run giving you a better quality score. And then if you later on do want to run ads, those ads will be less expensive for you than for someone who's covering all the same stuff but has like a really <coughs> ugly, crappy <coughs> Your ads will cost less because, because they're magical. But it is true. And I talked about the cross-linking between related posts. Um, and then it's very useful to link out to other people. It's great if people link into you. But even if they're not linking to you, if you are linking out, you're going to start to rank higher. And then Wikipedia and other things are going to link to you in the long run. But in, in general, Google just notices, are you being a good web citizen? Are you sharing the love? And if you're doing that, that's going to be helpful. This picture is meant to be friendly, by the way. That was my topic here, how to be friendly to search engine. So <clears throat> as far as you're getting people coming in and they're reading things and then you don't know what's happening, you'd like to kind of engage with people. People um, uh, often talk about how do I get more people, people excited as opposed to just search engines excited. And so it can be useful then to have a presence on Facebook, on Twitter, and so forth for your site or for yourself. Um, so, and that just is a way for you to reach out. It's like an extra sort of channel. Um, I don't advocate having a Facebook page and not having your own blog. It seems hard to imagine, but someday Facebook will be gone. It's true. They've only been here for 10 years. They may stay for a long time, but they, you remember that Facebook and MySpace started the same year. And how many of us have a MySpace page? I still have one, actually, but I never, I don't even think, I, I don't know what's on there. Um, using the, uh, the tired person, I suppose. But so, um, uh, but knowing that Facebook won't be around forever is a, a one very large reason to not have all of your eggs in the Facebook basket. It's much better to have your own site and then to have Facebook link to that site. Does that make sense? But still, it is still useful to do that, to link from Facebook in, because people are, it's like being, it's like having a store at a mall. You're going to get some foot traffic. Some people are going to go by and see what you're doing. You have to put some time into going there and interacting with other people, liking their stuff and interacting and being a good, again, a good citizen. So, but it will pay off for you. And the same on Twitter. 
Um, so uh, the more that you're community on Twitter and, and enjoy what other people are doing and contribute to their conversation, promote them, the more likely they'll want to scratch your back too. If I can mix metaphors a little bit. So I would engage, I would focus on that. Um, and um, you can put buttons and things on your site um, to help make it easier for people to share your content. Um, some people advocate now, and there are tools, extensions, that you can add to your website that will let you very easily embed a tweet that you saw and then write about it, or to put a suggested, hey, tweet this type thing. Those things to me feel so super cheesy, and I kind of hate them. But every now and again, one of them is really good. So it, it, you can experiment with seeing, does that help? Does that work? I do like the pictures on, with words, which again, kind of cheesy, but then if you make a good one, and people want to share it, then you win. Oh, by the way, if you do those things, if you make a picture with, with words on it, um, put your name or logo or somehow physically embedded in the picture of a thing about your site so someone else can't say that it's theirs. But then it's a big, scary place, and your content is unprotected. I do think it is useful to, as I say, particularly for business, to start a newsletter. But even for your own self, if you um, just want to stay in touch with the people that visit your site, you can still start a newsletter and then write to it once or twice a year. Say, hey, I'm still here. And like you're building a relationship then. You know, people are kind of getting to know you through your content. So even as a person, um, you can use a mail. MailChimp is by, by my new favorite thing. I've been using it for a, a year or so now, and I love the tools that it has. Um, very easy for, uh, for, uh, for anyone to use. Um, and it's free up to a certain level, level of users and a certain number of emails a month. So why not? You know? just one second, what is MailChimp? MailChimp is a tool for um, sending out email, mass emails. And it's free and it's literally MailChimp.com. And then you can add an extension to your site that will let people on your site sign up to receive your MailChimp. Sending out vast emails. When I say vast, mass. 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 Like, like, so they're coming from your Outlook, but they're coming from, you know, on your regard, on your behalf from the Okay, and that could be for a newsletter. Yeah, a newsletter is a great idea. Um, people often ask about selling stuff online. This picture doesn't really talk about selling stuff. I just thought it was awesome. So, uh, so, so, how many people here are interested in selling things on their website, by the way? On their website, selling items on their website. Um, what are you going to, what were you thinking of selling? Um, I would have a lot of unique items, collectibles. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm really trying to bypass uh, fees and taxes if possible. <laughs> So here is the challenge. Is that <laughs> here is the challenge. Um, if you are going to simply skirt the things, skirt, skirt the rules, then that would be fine to do. But if, if you are going to try and abide by the rules, it is boy, there are a lot of rules. It is just a pain in the butt to try and sell stuff online. So if you're selling more than like a half dozen items, I find that it, you know. Frankly, for the headaches and everything else, it is better just to make yourself a little store on Etsy and link to your Etsy store or eBay or whatever service you do. Because it just is so hard. I mean, the shipping, just managing shipping charges and, and figuring out how to charge people for shipping um, and figuring out what taxes you do and don't need to get collect from them, it is really, really terrible, as you know. So, um, so my suggestion is if you're selling just a few things, if you're in Pennsylvania and you're selling t-shirts, you are so awesome because um, you don't need to collect sales tax from people. It's clothing, so it's a big deal. I mean, it's just great. So simple stuff. It's, it's not hard to sell online, and you can do a little get a little plugin for your website. You know, your WordPress has a couple of different little ones and big ones, um, and they're easy to use. They they either they talk straight to PayPal, and then people will go to PayPal and give them money, and then they'll come back to your site and give their address. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I can point you to some resources. And um, and for for you, Nancy, what were you thinking of selling online? Um, we sell T-shirts and print art prints. So art prints is where you start to walk into that sort of well, now we got to worry about you know, do we charge tax? Do we not charge tax? Ah, you're a five hundred one c three. You are really lucky. Okay. Well, so that's easy to do because you can pre-program in to your response. 
um, uh, the, your thank you letter as one of their replies, so you've covered that requirement. So, so you can do a few things, but again, once you get past a, you know, maybe a dozen items, it can simply be easier to handle it elsewhere for the shipping reasons. So that's all I was really going to say about, about that, but I'm happy to talk more and to point you to more resources, too. Okay, so the hardest thing about blogging is to keep doing it. So I don't have a magic, um, this is the road ahead, by the way. But it's also a thing about just sort of keep going. You know what I mean? If you're, uh, one of the favorite sayings for myself is if you're, if you're in hell, don't stop. Just keep going through. Um, but in, in general with blogging, um, uh, I think that it is helpful to write, when, when you find yourself blocked, my biggest trick is to write the shortest possible post as your next post. Because the tendency is to say, I haven't written in a year. And oh my god, now I've got to write something awesome. I've built up all this expectation in myself and in the world. And maybe make for yourself a rule that my first post is going to be, I'm going to post a photo and not have any words on it. Um, or I'm going to post a one sentence post. Just because it just, you know, kind of breaks the dam, kind of gets things going. Um, and so that's my very first best piece of advice. And my second piece of advice is to um, walk away from the computer and write something on paper. That also can be helpful, changing your point of view. Um, or ask someone else to write a guest post also can be a good um, thing, because then you don't feel bad. It's they, they, whatever they wrote, you're going to be so excited there's some new things on your site. So those are some things that I try. Uh, also try shaking up your media. So if you typically are, a, um, you know, words with words, Take a photo and just post that. Or do something that you're really crappy at, like make a drawing. Or if you're really good at making drawings, um, paint a painting or sing a song or make an audio recording. Just change your media because that, the act of changing what you're doing is just interesting to you. You know what I mean? And then if you can be bold enough to share that with everyone, um, no one else is going to be as critical about it as you are. Or if they are, they're awful people. You don't like them anyway. Um, but but you, when you post that, again, it kind of gets you past some of these things. But I actually would be interested to know, for those people who have had blogs for a while and you find yourself stuck, what do you do to kind of push through? I, have, I meet every week with four friends who are all writers or artists. We have something called an attention group, which is a thing that they invented, invented at Harvard, um, in which you just sit down with each other, you don't share work, you just say every week what your, what your plans are for the week. Oh. And so you're accountable to actual people every week. Accountability is very helpful. Yeah. That's nice. And it's really like face to face accountability, which is different than yeah. screen to face accountability, which you can walk away from. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Even if you know your audience is expecting you promise them something, but if you're not having to like go up to physically someone, right. that's good. And, and you know you're going to see them again next and week. And a lot of us do the work that we promised to do the day before. Awesome. Because we know that thing is going to <laughs> That's great. That's a great solution. I love that. And it doesn't even need to be a big group, right? No. In fact, smaller is better. Yeah, because if there's too many, then your accountability is diluted. Right. Anybody else have any ideas or how you got over a hurdle at one point? Well, I used to blog a lot. John Carmen used to say that I posted more than anybody had ever known. And, but I don't anymore. Now I'm maybe posting once or twice a week and giving myself permission to back off and make sure that I really like what I'm writing and I'm standing behind what I'm writing. Has, that's been a Turning point and an important one. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a part of that sort of like refocusing on what, what it yeah. means to you and what it does for you. That's I think that's important to do. To remember, to revisit why you started this in the first place. And sometimes, actually, a, li a blog cannot have a lifespan and just be done. And it's time to stop that blog and maybe start a different one under a different name. I mean, you feel like, oh no, I'm going to lose all my traffic. But you can tell them where you're going. It's, it's not like they, you're going to drop off the face of the web. So that's, that's a great solution to really kind of just change your rules for yourself, your own internal rules. Cool. I, I'm kind of in a unique position because I'm reacting to the news, and it's always changing. So, so being angry all the time is very helpful. <laughs> I'm not angry. <laughs> no, not angry. No, I, I, uh, I, I think I'm more analytical than angry, but it's always changing, so I never really run out of things to, to write about because yeah. certainly in politics and the news, you know, it's it's uh, it's like the weather. You know, you don't like it. Wait a minute, and there's something else to do. You just gotta gotta search for it. 
I think that could be true too. So sometimes why you started your blog maybe isn't there anymore and it's time to just notice what's interesting me now. And if it interests me, maybe it will interest the people that I've been communicating with. You know? So just say, well, I've always, so I did this, I, I did this actually, I, I used to write a lot of blog posts about um, drinking, about cocktails and alcohol and spirits. Um, and I um, used to uh, be part of this informal sort of group that like the one Monday every month would um, write, invent a cocktail or write about a cocktail they had and so forth. So that came out on Mondays, which meant that on Sunday night, or sometimes Monday night, I had to make the cocktail and write about it, because I don't think I had enough to do it on Saturday. Um, but so that meant, that meant that Tuesday was actually a really shitty day for me, and it started to affect my life, you know, and so I actually had to stop writing about booze. And I feel sad. You know? I do. But I also feel like, you know what, it's okay, Cindy. It's all right. It's still fine. <laughs> I can still write about other stuff. But actually, well, having done that, it, it really caused me to have to rethink my site a little bit, you know? But I think that's okay, too, because you're always reinventing yourself. But I do have, I did buy the domain name Spirited Cuisine, and so at some point I do feel like I want to start up a blog about, you know, drinking and eating. Name? Mm -hmm. It's a cute name, right? Buy those names. Really, another basic question, when you said, I have to buy the domain name, I'm going to give you the whole, so the first lecture was awesome, I was so excited for you, but they recorded it, so all of those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I won't ask any more questions, I'll look at the... Well, I want people to ask questions, because now is the question okay. point of the session, but so that one, I want to let you know that I did answer it, and I will talk to you privately about that. Okay. But they do have, we have a few minutes before we rush away to our various lunches and stuff. Does anyone else have, a reason why you came here that I never did get around to talking? I'd like to know if others in the room would like to promote their blogs. Oh, yeah, go ahead. We audience. had talked them through, I think, before you came, but tell us about oh, yours. No, I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't have one, but I wanted to know who everybody can, else was. And I can piggyback on that, which is the, the in addition, just, it's like I'm still, even though you kind of addressed it, and I think it's germane to your question, is the, why are people blogging? I mean, what is it? You know, we kind of touched on it, but like, so who the hell are you to be blogging about it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, why I not? To say it. Why, yeah, not? why not? Sure, why not? But, and, you know, and. Well, we all, so part of the answer to that, I mean, people have specific reasons. So you're a business, you're promoting a business, you've got certain things you want to talk about and be a thought leader. You're, you're blogging mentioned. about things you're passionate about, and people that have similar interests will find you and engage with you. Mm -hmm. Right, that's why right. you're blogging. Do you know who's looking? Can you ever find out who's looking at your site? Sometimes, sometimes people will comment and you'll know their specific name. If they've commented, but if they haven't But if they haven't, you may or may not be able to tell, you know, where they came from. If someone linked to you, you can at least tell which were the popular things. But when I talk about engaging people, a lot of times what I'm trying to do is figure out who it was that talked about, who is coming to my site. Right, but you can't um, always know. Well, actually, Google's... Um, Analytics, in a kind of a creepy way, can tell you a lot about the demographics of the people that visit your really? site. Um, I um, well, someone else talks, so I'll pull, I'll pull up. But one, one more reason to um, blog is because the act of putting something down, the creative act of doing that, helps you clarify your own thinking or helps you evolve or become, you know, the next version of you. Right. And some people are making money off of these things, too, right? So there are people making money off of like YouTube videos now. It's, it's, to make money off a blog, you become you have to become a professional blogger, which means that you focus your energies there. You know what I mean? And you can really push it, but it's hard, right, David? Make money on a blog? Yeah, yeah. It depends on uh, how much traffic you're getting, and uh, uh, I, I think for us, I mean, we we're getting 600 hits or so a day according to Google Analytics, mm -hmm. and we just don't see it as enough to have an ad that's going to generate enough money for me to live the lifestyle that I've grown to expect. Because you know, I love to sit in my kitchen table all day, but 600 hits a day, it's, it's, you've got to be up at the, you know, the, at least for a news blog, a political blog, you've got to be up at the tens of thousands of hits really? a day. Because yeah. I think 600 is a lot. It is a lot, but that doesn't mean that it's enough of an audience for people to pay for. Yeah, it's not enough to quit my day job. Yeah, it's not enough to quit my day job. My, my wife just won't let me do that. <laughs> I've asked. Twice. Let me, sh let me show you this. So again, this is my business website. Yeah, have your wife just hit like a couple <laughs> thousand times. <laughs> a couple thousand times. <laughs> 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 so this is my website. Um, and I'm just going to show you the 
this is traffic for Big Big Web. So, by the way, so another reason to blog is to drive traffic, like you said. So I make money by building websites and helping people know how to do this stuff. But my blog helps people know that I, that I know what I'm talking about. It helps. Oh, it's in the state. It gives me credibility. That's right. But it also just lets people know a little bit about what I'm like. You know what I mean? My writing style. You know, that I can talk, like, hopefully in a way that people understand. So, so here's a bunch of traffic to my site. Now, what Google will show, also show me, though, this is hard to talk about here. I closed the tiny little button that I needed to see. When you're tracking stuff, tracking stuff with this, is so Google gives you this free tool for looking at the traffic to your website. They have a thing in here when you're looking at your audience, you can look at demographics a little bit. And so I can look at the overview of the demographics of my site and look at what I can find, what Google will tell me. That 30-some uh, percent of my uh, traffic is female and more is male. This is not surprising. If there's more technical stuff than not technical stuff on my website, so it's going to skew a little bit male. And then you can see the age ranges. It's kind of weird that Google can tell you that, but they can tell you that because they, people log in to their Gmail account and then they go and search for something. And so Google knows, oh, it's this guy. So you, apparently mostly this guy, <laughs> my site. Um, and then their age range as well, because again, the, you know, these are the people that are searching for the stuff that's available on my site. It will tell me a little bit as well about, uh, so there's a, digging down on age and so forth, and then it will tell me a little bit about interests, and it makes these categories. So uh, the largest percentage of the people, but it's still not that big, um, uh, the largest, so people are in more than one sort of category, but there's a lot of technophiles and movie lovers and TV lovers and shutter bugs. You know what I mean? You can see there's probably some overlap. Some of those people are more, so that's there. Some travel you know, music lovers, again, down here. Home decor enthusiasts. They're in there, too. Everyone loves home decor, right? No. So uh, news junkies and avid readers, it's, and so the, these are so this is some of the characteristics, the top characteristics people have, and then these are their market segments: employment, real estate, residential properties, apparel, and accessories. So the stuff that I write about, which is like how to make your site show up more, these are the people that care most about doing that. It's kind of the way my takeaway from here. So that's interesting, but also interesting as a human being who uses the web. It's like, oh. So the stuff that I do on the web, searching around and looking at, for me, shoes and recipes for soup, that will show up in the traffic reports of the sites that I visit. So you do know a little bit about the people. Now, I don't know how exactly to use this, to be honest with you, uh, for my business website. Mostly what I want is people who want to hire me. It's who I'm trying to bring. And they don't have a category. But I can learn a little bit that maybe I should be using examples about real estate. That yeah, those would be good examples for me to start using. So you know, you can figure out, try. It just tells you things to experiment with. That's what it does. This is a tool that you have to turn on if you're using Google Analytics on your website. You have to turn on this demographics thing. Um, it isn't there, but I mean, it's always visible over there. But it'll t it runs you through some fairly. Uh, poorly written explanation of how to turn this tool on. The Yoast plugin helps with this too, by the way. Helps you turn this on. Okay. That is what I have. I am Cynthia Kluski, Big Big Design. I have a few business cards that I remembered to, to bring. Um, and, but you can just Google me, because I am very Googleable. Uh, big Big Design. Okay? Okay. Thank you.